You ready for this? All right, special Riemann sums. Hope you watch that first because that is going to give you the, the springboard that we're going to be able to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus, the FTC. So check it out. Uh, we can only use Riemann sums. Like that's, that's all we got right now. We can get better and better approximations uh, of the definite integral by getting more subintervals, by like using some random weird connection uh, that we saw from the exploration. Like, but we know if we, if we go back, we know that some Riemann sums overestimate and some underapproximate. So that means we get to use magic, you guys. Check it out. We get to use magic, all right? So we're going to consider this function f prime. Now, f prime, okay, we want, we want to get the value of that yellow area, right? That yellow area. To do that, to do that, we would have to use some kind of a definite integral because that's what definite integrals do. They, that's their application. They give me area under a curve. So I would want the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx in order to do that. But if I Riemann, I've got to think about um, too big, too small. I, that's an increasing curve. So right, rank, right rectangles would be too big, left rectangles would be too small. So there must be some magic value that would give me the exact area, right? Right? Left, right rectangles are too big. There you go. Boom. There's the right rectangle. It's too big. The area of that rectangle would be the height at B multiplied by the width, B minus A. This left rectangle, that's too small, right? That's too small. It's clearly too small. The area would be the height at A, F of A, multiplied by the width, B minus A. That's too little. There's got to be somewhere. There's got to be a rectangle at some value that gives me exactly <laughs> that is exactly the same as the area under that curve. Check it out. Presto majesto. There is a magic value C whose height, F of C, multiplied by the width, B minus A. That is the magic value I'm talking about. Do you believe that exists? You please believe that exists because it has to exist somewhere in there. All right. Thank you, Harry. So a little trip down memory lane here about the mean value theorem. We, I, it was addressed in the exploration, but I want to go into a little more detail about it. So the mean value theorem is like the magic value uh, for slopes because it connected the instantaneous slope derivative to the average slope, just slope between two points. So on this graph, right, if we just found the slope between those two endpoints, we would get um, the slope between a f of a and the slope uh, and the point b f of b, right? That's just a calculation that you know and love, change in y over change in x, f of b minus f of a, all divided by b minus a, right? That's the average slope over an interval. So an average slope with the mean value theorem says that as long as f of x, the function we're playing with, is differentiable on the interval a to b, then there is a magic value that the derivative is equal to that average slope calculation. So you see that, uh, that classic mean value theorem uh, final solution there, f prime of c, magical c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So if you don't remember the mean value theorem, it's kind of crucial to what's happening here. It's a big one. It is a huge theorem in the, in the world of calculus. Okay, so you might want to go back and just brush up on that or just take my word for it. This is what the mean value theorem says. We're going to apply a little algebra to that equation. Uh, and when we do so, it's, it's not anything special. I'm just going to multiply both sides by b minus a. And I'm going to end up at f prime at c times b minus a is equal to f of b minus f of a. Now, hit the pause button. I mean, not, don't literally hit the pause button. Like, hit the mental pause button. That f prime at c times b minus a, that's a product. Hmm. A product's like two areas of rectangles, right? Hmm. So what the mean the value theorem says is there is a connection between a product and a difference. 
the product f prime at c times b minus a can actually be turned into f of b minus f of a because of this mean value theorem. So let me give you a little picture right there. If, if the area of that green rectangle is, so is, is found by that magical c value, then the area would be f prime at c times b minus a, but through the power of the mean value theorem, we could actually turn that product into a difference. So this magical C value is this, this out there magic C value is actually findable. It's findable through the mean value theorem. That's huge. That is huge. So let's keep going. Okay, that was a little trip down memory lane. Now let's go back to the beginning. We are trying to calculate the exact value of this definite integral, right? The, the yellow area here is just the integral from A to B of F prime. So here's my game plan. I'm going to break the interval into infinitely tiny subintervals. On each of those subintervals, I'm going to use this magical C value that gives me the exact area of the, the, the exact area under the curve is the area of the rectangle. I'm going to use the Riemann sum, add all that together. I'm going to then use the idea that I just showed you there, turning a product into a difference because that it was the magic C value. Add everything together. Check it out. Are you ready? Okay. Are you sure you're ready? Because I'm going. All right. I'm zooming in on the interval from A to B. Here it is. Now I've already cut it up into little infinitely tiny slices. A to X sub 1. That's like an infinitely tiny cut. Okay. It's really, really, really tiny, but just for our purposes so we can see it. Uh, C sub 1 here on the first subinterval is my magic value. So I'm going to find the height. So that is going to be F of C sub 1. That is F of C sub 1 there. And then the width, right? The width, the difference between A and X sub 1 is X sub 1 minus A. Okay, that's the first one. We got, an in, we got infinity minus 1 left. So we're going to, on the next subinterval, so from x1 to x2, we're going to pick the magic value c2, right? c sub 2 because it's the c value on the second subinterval. We're going to calculate the height at that point, which is f of c sub 2. So that height times the width. Now that width is x sub 2 minus x sub 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I keep doing that. I keep on, keep on, keep on. Do it an infinite number of times. And when I'm done, I'm just going to write down all of the rectangle areas. So we've already talked about the first two. The first rectangle area was f prime of c1 times the width x1 minus a. Now the next one was f prime of c2 times the width x2 minus x sub 1. And so on down the line. Right? f prime of c sub 3 times x sub 3 minus x sub 2. We get this nice little pattern forming. I can keep going and keep going and keep going, but I think you probably see uh, what that pattern is. And now I'm going to get all the way to the last one. And the last one, just with a little um, weirdness here, would be, the, would be the height f prime of c sub n, where n, that little value there, is going to infinity. And the last width would be b minus x sub n minus 1. So the, the one right before the last one. So these are all of these are the areas of all of the rectangles n sub n sub intervals. Now we're going to turn each one of those products, like I've said, we're going to turn that into a difference. So let's go back up to the first one. As a difference, f prime of c sub one times x one minus a would be not f prime anymore. It would be f of x one minus f of a. Okay, right? If you need to go back and, and look at that mean value theorem thing again, right? That's that's that line right there, that is the same line as applied to these functions and x values. So we'll keep writing. So this one, this product can be rewritten 
as f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1, and so on, f of x sub 3 minus f of x sub 2, and the rest just keep on coming. Now there's an infinite number of those in between, but the last one is important. The last one, we're going to take that product and turn it into a difference. So that would look like f at b minus f at the previous one, f uh, uh, x sub n minus 1. Okay, so all the rectangle areas, we're going to add all those together. Okay, we're going to add them all together. Now, there's an easy way to write that with summation notation. Summation notation would say that if we sum from i equals 1 to n, right, we can rewrite that sum. You see how the c, the little 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, is changing on the c? So that would look like f prime at c sub i, right? i is changing from 1, moving up to n. And then what are all of these? All of these differences, right? Those are all widths. These are all widths, and widths can be represented as a change in x. Widths are changes in x. So I'm going to call that delta x sub i. So a width, the ith width from the first width to the last width. Now, what I'm saying here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you watch the bonus coverage, oh my gosh, that sucker right there, if I push n to infinity, that sucker right there is the definition of the definite integral. That is the limit definition of a definite integral. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. That is a to b of f prime of x dx in all its limit definition glory. Okay, things are happening. Things are happening. Now, I'm going to add all this red stuff over here. Now, what you might notice in adding this red stuff, oh my gosh, do you see it? I, you're, you're seeing it before I'm doing it. I know you are. I know you are. Right? If you add all of these together, okay, I got f of x1 uh, minus f of x1. See ya later, f of x sub 1. And you got an f of x sub 2 minus an f. Okay, see you later. And see you later. And see you later. And see you later. later, later. Everything wipes out except for the two values at the beginning and end, f at b and negative f at a. So all of those infinite things just boil down to f at b minus f at a. Did that just happen? We have a way to find the value of a definite integral of f prime just by finding this function f, just by connecting the function f prime to this anti-derivative function, this function whose derivative is f prime. All I have to do is figure out what that function is and evaluate it at b and evaluate it at a and find the difference. That's it. That's it. Now watch this. Watch this. <laughs> this right here, this is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And oh my gosh, you should be just laughing or crying or jumping for joy. So come on back. Come on back. And let me do an example that should seem familiar. Okay. We want to integrate from 1 to 4 uh, x to the 1 half dx. This, was, this is the exact problem that you saw on the exploration in the previous video. Now, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, all I need to do is find the antiderivative function of x to the one half. The antiderivative, like, like Jeopardy style, like the derivative of this function is x to the one half. And then like, oh, I'm buzzing in. Uh, Alex, what is two thirds x to the three halves? Yes, I just won $1,000. The antiderivative, antiderivative function to x to the one half is two thirds x to the three halves. 
So all I have to do is evaluate that at four and then evaluate it at one and find the difference. So here's how we're gonna notate that. We're gonna say uh, two thirds X to the three halves from one to four. And I'm just moving, that's a straight line on the other side. That straight line is like a, I'm substituting in values. Okay, so notationally, that's what you can say. I'm gonna sub in four, so that's two thirds times four to the three halves minus two thirds times one to the three halves. And four to the three halves is eight. So this value is 16 thirds. One to the three halves is one. So that value is two thirds. And oh my goodness gracious, four and two thirds, 4.6666666 is the exact, exact, not too big, not too small, exact area under that curve the value of the definite integral. So we have a, a, a <laughs> we have a way to calculate the exact values of definite integrals. And all we have to do based on the fundamental theorem of calculus is find an antiderivative and sub in both of the limits, sub in the top limit, sub in the bottom limit. You all, I words cannot express how amazing <laughs> Mathematics is what a ride. That was awesome. I feel I feel so good for you right now that you were able to see that for the first time. I just wish I was you right now. I wish I was so you so I could feel what you're feeling. Just this exhilaration for seeing the fundamental theorem of calculus for the first time. <laughs> it still gives me chills, and I've seen I'm, guys. I'm ancient. And I've seen this lots of times. For you, the first time seeing it, oh my gosh, you guys must be on seventh heaven, cloud nine, whatever right now, top of the world. Now, peace out.